So I did a survey a couple days ago and a lot of you mentioned that you want to learn more about AWS and higher level architecture diagrams. I think you guys are a little bit sick in the head if you want to learn more about AWS, but here we go. I'm going to tell you a little bit about RDS and Aurora, which is something that we're actually refactoring to use on our project at work. So I figured I'd just tell you like some of the stuff I learned along the way. And by far, nothing in this video is production ready. I'm just giving an overview. There's a lot of stuff that you should probably make sure that it's much more secure. And I'll talk about that. So why would you use AWS RDS? A lot of projects require that you use AWS to host your stuff because it is such a tried and true company, right? It's just, they have a ton of experience for hosting up these databases and it's reliable. Also a lot of projects, especially government projects may require you to deploy your stuff to aws.gov, which is like its own isolated subset of AWS where a lot of government servers and services are deployed to. Additionally, RDS just has a bunch of baked in capabilities to it, right? You have like automated backups and snapshots. You have ability to do read, write replicas. You have different uh, availability zones. We have instances where you can kind of like replicate data. It's, it's a lot of features, right? A lot of good stuff, but it is kind of complex and it takes some time to learn. Now I am going to walk you through some Terraform code, but before I do that, I want to talk about what we have set up here. So we have a global RDS cluster, which has the East coast is the RDS instance, which is going to be like the primary, uh, you can call it like the writer. And then on the other side, we have the West Coast, which is going to be the reader. So I'm going to go ahead and just say writer here. And there's also another thing I should probably point out is that inside of this region, we have something called a cluster. Okay, so a cluster. And inside the cluster, you can actually have multiple different instances that kind of like have, you know, availability in case one of them were to die. Okay, so in our case, we're going to keep it simple. We just have a single writer inside of the East region. And then we have a reader, you can call it a replica, which is inside of a cluster inside of West. And those are all kind of hooked together by using a global table, okay? So this is something that you might see on a really basic setup with AWS with RDS. Again, you don't have to do this whole replica reader writer thing. Pretty good for availability reasons and also performance reasons, because if for whatever reason East Coast goes down, you could potentially just set this as your primary. And now this will become the writer and then all your users can just read and write from this data as you're trying to fix the East region. But some things I want to point out here is that the reader, you literally can only read data from it. Okay, so in your application code, you're doing select statements, you're doing join statements, you can actually read it from the reader. And it's going to be a lot faster because you're probably going to have web services running on that West region over here. And it can just access the data that's co-located closer in the same region. I'll just say service and then over here on your East Coast, you probably also have some services deployed and they will be configured to read and write from here. This one will be configured to read from this one, but also it's going to write from the writer. OK, so it's a little bit complicated and then you're going to have a VPC set up so that the East Coast can access the West Coast. And then you have some security groups set up and you'll have like VPN set up so you can actually get into these. It gets complicated, but let's just keep it simple. So let's just say you have this set up. How would you do this in Terraform and why would you want to use Terraform anyway? So when you start building out real production systems, like quality systems, you don't go into AWS and click things, right? That's that's not how you do it, right? The way you do it is you use an infrastructure as code tool, such as Terraform. You can use AWS CDK. You can use Pulumi, SST, something I've talked about on this channel, but SST is an abstraction over Pulumi, and Pulumi uses Terraform modules. So in my opinion, Terraform is still like the, the de facto standard way to do infrastructure as code. I haven't professionally used Prolumi yet, so I can't really talk about it. But Terraform, pretty straightforward. It's just kind of understanding the syntax. You have these .tf files, and you can define different resources inside of here. So in our case, I'm defining a global cluster, and I'm setting the engine as Aurora PostgreSQL. I like to think of resources as just like functions, and you pass in props or parameters to those functions, and then under the hood, it basically spins up AWS resources. And then scrolling down, what else do we have? Well, we have a RDS cluster called default, and it is setting up a provisioned cluster with the min and max capacity here. So this is kind of important to point out. When you're using Aurora, you are charged based on your min capacity. And if you get a bunch of load, you will be charged on how much CPU usage that cluster goes up to. So you could potentially put this as 32, but you're not going to be charged for that 32 unless you get a bunch of traffic from what I understand, but we'll keep it low. And by the way, if you are following along, like delete this stuff after you're done, cause this will cost you about $40 a month with like the min of 0.5. And I think that's the lowest you can make it. Okay, so there's other stuff in here. We have like the username and password that's hard coded. Obviously you'd wanna have this come in from a Terraform variable, which I'm not gonna talk about, but you can actually define variables and pass those in from like Secrets Manager or some other places. You probably wanna have these secured and probably also rotate the password every so often. Like I said at the start of this, there's a lot of stuff that's not production ready in this demo I'm talking about. So inside of the cluster, you then define a 
AWS RDS cluster instance. By the way, if you're not familiar with how this syntax works, basically I'm using an AWS provider that Terraform brings in, and then it has a list of resources that we can just use to define things on Amazon. So they give you some examples, and if you scroll down here, all the inputs that this thing takes, and then it also gives out some outputs when you run it. So you can kind of chain all these things together, and behind the scenes, Terraform creates a dependency graph and it knows where and when to apply these changes. So after you spend about 30 minutes to an hour trying to figure out the correct configuration to all this, you then have a cluster that has one instance in it. You can create multiple instances that all live in the same cluster. But one thing we're also doing is I have another cluster called my replica cluster, but it's living in the West Coast. So if you look at provider here, that's using a replica provider, which I have over here, provider AWS alias replica region US West 1. So Terraform, when it runs these things, it's going to put it in my West region. And then we tie them all together by using this global cluster identifier. So this is pointing to that resource up here. And so they're all basically pointing to that global cluster. And the instances are pointing to the, um, the individual clusters in the region. Some other things you should set if you are to go to production. You should probably have delete protection true so that a developer doesn't come along and accidentally delete this stuff. So I would recommend in production set this to true. You can also set lifecycle rules. And you can basically say like, hey, I don't want you to ever delete this. I think it's prevent destroy is true. Okay, so I'd also recommend putting this on all of your resources so that Terraform doesn't accidentally try to destroy these things. Um, but again, this is just, I'm just giving you an overview. So now that we have all these resources defined, what you can do is in your terminal, you can say Terraform init, like a type, okay? That's gonna pull in any modules, like the AWS module I talked about. You'll see here, brought that in. And it basically puts it in this Terraform directory here. We have this AWS module. And then it uses that module to give access to these different resources that we see here. And then finally, you can do a Terraform apply, which is gonna read through this TF file, gonna see if you made any changes to it, and then it's going to apply them to your running AWS account. I don't know what it's trying to apply here. I'm just gonna go ahead and say yes and hope it doesn't break. And then once it's done applying, it'll say like everything has changed, it added a bunch of stuff and you'll be good to go. So now when Terraform finishes running, you can actually go into AWS and you'll see all of your RDS instances created. Now, this took about 30 minutes or more to like finish creating all this stuff. So dealing with AWS is a lot of hurry up and wait. If you're using DevOps stuff and Terraform, it's just, it's slow. It takes a long time to create this stuff. Um, but you can see here, we have the global cluster. Inside of that, we have a East cluster and we have a West cluster. And inside of these clusters, we have the ability to connect to them with an endpoint. Again, this is another thing you probably should never do in production. You'll see over here, I have a publicly accessible true flag. Do not do this in production. You probably want to have this live in a VPC and your services should have fine grain access to the database. You don't want anyone on the internet to be able to access your database because someone could just brute force your password or if a password gets leaked, then they can just access your stuff directly. Okay, so again, you probably don't want that. You want to use a VPC. It just takes a little bit extra work to get that all set up. Um, but once you have these instances set up, you actually have to go into the security groups and you have to go into the security group over here and you have to edit the inbound rules and allow traffic from everybody, right? So over here I said allow all traffic from 0.0.0.0, .0 to the Postgres port. Okay, so now you have access to actually connect to this. Let's look at Tables Plus. So Tables Plus is a tool I like to use to connect to my databases. You'll see over here we have a cluster writer and a cluster reader. So the writer, again, is our East Coast. If you edit this, You'll see I have foo for the username. I have that URL that you can find um, if you just go back to your database and click on this. You'll see that you have some endpoints here. So you want to get the writer. And that's what I put directly in here. We put the password in. We put the database name. And then also you'll have to get a certificate. So there's a global bundle file. that If you go to AWS over here, you'll see over here, just grab this global bundle.pim, put it on your machine, and then load it into Tables Plus. And if you have all this stuff set up correctly and your security groups are allowing traffic externally to your cluster, you can just connect to it and then you'll see that you'll have access to your database, right? You can start running queries directly in this if you want to. And just to show that this is set up with a read-write replica, I can go over here and just like insert a um, to-do. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and I'm going to run this with like buy groceries, please. And then I'll run the whole thing. And then if I look at the table, you'll see that if I refresh this, it has two rows now. Again, I did this on the writer instance in East Coast, but because of the way we have the replica set up with Terraform, I'm going to go and look at the reader on the West Coast, and we should now see 
to records. Okay, that same record we just wrote to in East gets replicated to West, and then all of your West Coast services can get that data and do queries at a much uh, lower latency than if they were to have to go all the way to East Coast. All right, so that was basically a quick overview of like, I'm sure there's a ton of stuff I could have mentioned as well in this video, but I just want to keep it short and sweet for you all. I'm not going to post this code anywhere because I don't think it's production ready and I just don't want you guys copying it and pretending like it's good. So take what you can from this video and learn from it and uh, you know write your own Terraform scripts. I can't think of anything else I should hit on in this video. So if you do have something that I missed or you want me to explain a little bit better, leave a comment. Maybe I can make a video, a follow-up video on this. But I hope you guys enjoyed learning something new about AWS. There's tons of services in here that I've used over the years and I could probably make videos on. So also, yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.